<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for everyone uh, for joining us this uh, morning. Um, I, I see in the uh, in the chat. Um, happy first day of spring. So I, I'll echo that sentiment. Um, we are um, participating in uh, the Enterprise Chapter Well Prepared Program, which is a program collaboration between the National Institutes of Health and several of our community partners, including the Kaya Defy Chapter, who has been gracious enough to facilitate. Um, this portion of the program for us. Um, all of the programs will be facilitated by um, either doctors or um, registered nurses uh, or healthcare professionals. So we wanna make sure that when the content that, that's delivered is coming from um, content experts. Um, we'll be meeting um, and we'll put the schedule in, in the chat um, roughly once a month. Um, our next session will be in, uh, well, I think we have two sessions in April, one in May and one in June. Um, we're looking forward to the sessions being interactive. So please feel free to ask questions. Um, there will be prizes, hint, hint. Um, and we're looking forward to having a good time and um, learning something today. So without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Rhonda Jackson and let her um, guide us through the rest of the program. Good morning, everyone. Happy first day of spring. Um, looking forward to a very engaging program today. We have a phenomenal speaker in Dr. Lois Green. Uh, she'll tell you a little bit about herself once um, she begins her presentation. Uh, today she, she will be speaking about sleep and mental awareness. Um, she's a fantastic presenter. Please ask your questions, be engaged. Um, there's, if there's something she can't answer, she has a team supporting her right here. And um, just to be cognizant of everyone's time, we want to get started with our hour. Dr. Green? One of the things about technology is that you have to unmute so that your audience is able to hear you when you're speaking. A little tidbit there. So good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for just having me today and doing this program. I think it's so exciting that you know, our community is caring for our community in the way that it is. Because I don't think that these things that we're learning are necessarily intrinsic and that we should be a prepared nation. One of the things that the pandemic is definitely teaching us is that health and wellness is paramount to survival. So as, as Yolanda said, and I wanna thank my, my um, sisters that are on, on the, in the Zoom, just, um, my name is Dr. Lois Green and I'm a mom of three. I've probably raised six through my, through my home. I'm, I'm speaking to you from my dining room. So hello everybody, good morning. And I hope that um, folks are, that are not here are truly getting their sleep because we're gonna learn today just about how important sleep is to our well-being. So I've been a registered nurse. I started out as an emergency um, emergency room nurse went on to do um, critical care. I've done home care. I've done um, uh, leadership in ambulatory care. I've run a cancer center. Um, I do right now. I'm um, driving safety and quality in um, in the major trauma center in Newark, and just see how important it is um, for us to be safe because a lot of the accidents and things that I see are um, people who are sleep deprived. So. I love this quote, it's by Albert Einstein. It says, the most important decision we make is whether we, believe, whether we believe we live in a friendly or a hostile universe. And our perception of how we're going through life is, is so true. I heard someone say, you know, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. So when we're looking and learning all of these things about our health, we've got to understand and know that we can improve our physical being, that we can improve our mental health, that we can, um, just live well in this world. So, um, you know, I'm a professor, so I'm always looking at objectives, right? Um, what I wanna get out of here is how to, to look at how sleep is vital to our physical health and well being. And I'm gonna say that it's even more important than, than what we eat, it's more important than, um, than how, how we exercise. That there's a magic that happens in sleep that is still unstudied and still unknown, but it is critical. We're going to learn about the biological clock that, it, that um, controls how we naturally feel sleepy. And then we're going to talk about how sleep um, plays a role in keeping us healthy and functioning at our best. 
All right, so what is that biological clock, right? So it's, we have a natural system or an internal to tool, and I'm gonna tell you that we're, we're gonna spend one hour on this, but the, the study of sleep is in multiple volumes of books. It's in, you know, there's, there's videos, there's lots of information about the intricacy and the things that happen and how important it is, not only for our babies and our children, but for us as an adults, as adults. And we've got to recognize that we live in a, a world of technology that has put a lot of new input into our world, but our bodies still require the same, um, a same natural cycle. So we'll talk more about that. Then we'll talk about melatonin. It's just one of the substances that is required for us to get proper sleep. And our body will naturally, naturally create it if we give our body what it needs. All right. Why do we need sleep? And this is interactive. So please unmute and just tell me what is it that why do we need to sleep? And I can see you all. We need sleep to uh, rebuild our cells, the cells in our body to properly rebuild. Absolutely. Rebuilding our cells is, is critical to general health. Absolutely. What else? Uh, it helps to reduce stress. Yep. Yep. It helps your body heal. Healing. Mm -hmm. To provide us energy. Energy. Exactly. Um, there's so much that people think if I just keep, if I keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, I'll be more productive. Sometimes if you take a nap and they've done multiple studies on this, you'll actually be more productive than if you keep pushing at that, at that all nighter. All right. So some of the reasons why sleep is important. So you all mentioned physical restoration. It is so critical to our physical restoration. You know, our bodies um, are always kind of renewing, renewing itself, but if we don't get that proper sleep, then the breakdown happens. And even when we talk about um, aging, right? People who get more sleep age slower than people who are continuously pushing, right? Sleep helps clean our brain of toxins, right? So we know that not many things pass the blood brain barrier, but when we are able to sleep, you know, we've hydrated, we've done the things that we, sleep actually can help um, detoxify our brain. It helps us strengthen the immune system. One of the things that we're learning in this pandemic is that people with a strong immune system are able to make it past even being exposed to this virus and come to the other side of it as a, um, as a stronger person. So without proper sleep, our immune system is, is, is harmed. You know, it helps our mood. You know, how many of us have kids and you know when they, are, when they need sleep, their attitude changes, they're moody, they're cranky, they're getting into more fights with their siblings. It's just, a, um, a, it, it's necessary to kind of put things in perspective as, as a human. And then it helps with our information processing and our memorization, right? As, um, you know, professionals, we have a lot to do as far as processing information and you can tell and they've done lots of studies that when you are sleep deprived, it's almost as bad as being drunk because your body is not able to process information in the same way. So if something is coming at you, your reflexes are, are um, slower. Sleep is, is essential to, um, to memorization. I'll tell you a funny story. So I was uh, I don't know, tired, of, we're nurses. So sometimes we'll do these, these odd shifts and then still push it because we have a whole day of things to do. And then I went to um, go cook dinner and I put everything in the crock pot and I'm stirring it and I'm you know sitting back because I'm like, oh, it'll be cooking. I had not plugged in the, cro the crock pot. Right. So nothing is going to be cooking because I just didn't process that I need to plug it in. So there's there's um, definitely information processing that is deterred if we do not sleep. All right. Some of the other benefits of sleep. Right. Anti-inflammatory. Most of our diseases and the things that um, why people are getting sick is because of inflammation. If we sleep better, we have it has an anti-inflammatory um, effect. We talked about how just having some sleep and restoration boosts our energy and it fights stress. Somebody mentioned that, you know, we're gonna always be dealing with stressors, but if we can give our body the necessary rest, make sure that those hormones and that sleep goes through cycles, right? So if we can make sure that we go through all of the cycles, then we can fight stress. Um, they've done studies where, where proper sleep, and I, I'm gonna tell you, I work in the trauma center and the, my kids are, barreling through my house, please forgive me. Um, 
actually fights depression. So we've had people who have come in literally, you know, ready to jump off of, off of a bridge. And part of the treatment is that they get enough sleep before we can give them a, an assessment and have them um, look at their life in, in perspective. So we've got to really look at people who are um, depressed because even though they may be in the bed, if they're not getting the right amount of sleep, it can add to their, um, their mental health and, and their symptoms of depression. We talked about how important it is for immunity and um, how it boosts our immune system. We talked about um, improving memory. It's actually important for heart health as well. They have found that people that do not sleep well have um, poor cardiac output so that their hearts are, are damaged just from the lack of sleep. Um, definitely helps with weight, with weight loss. Believe it or not, if you sleep um, well, people who sleep well, and this is another, another set of studies, have there's been a um, relationship between poor sleep and obesity, right? So people that are that sleep poorly and these chemicals are not in balance, your body is craving more food, you're probably eating later, you're not, um, you're not in balance. And so the obesity level, and I'll show you a slide later, actually goes up. We talked about how sleep can contribute to longer life because your, your, your cells are sort of renewing and there's a, um, uh, an ability for your cells to be healthier you know, prevents cancer. It's all about healthy cells, right? The body rests and the body heals. So these are some of the benefits of sleep. All right. So um, this whole um, study was founded or based on good quality research information. So the American Academy of Pediatrics, right? It supports the American Academy of Sleep Medicine because they've looked at just how important it is even to children, right? As they're um, developing and growing. When, um, when you think, we talk, there's a lot of hormones that are released during sleep. There's something called HCG or human um, growth, HGH, human growth hormone, that if children aren't sleeping well, it impacts their, their growth and their development. So it's really important when we're working with um, parents and with children that we understand and that we give them that information on how important sleep is. We talked about the difficulty in concentrating, how kids can be more irritable. Um, they've tied lack of sleep to hypertension, obesity, we talked about, headaches, and then, and then depression. And then people who get enough sleep actually have, you know, uh, better um, outcomes as far as school performance. So it is critical. There's a quote that says, let him sleep for when he wakes, he will move mountains. And that just is um, speaking to how much, you know, we're no, we're a group of cells, but this group of cells can move mountains when it's given what it needs to produce its best, right? There's, um, there's been lots of studies even about talking about how, how do people heal? What are the things that impact them? So it's, it's good relationships, it's good nutrition, it's exercise, and sleep is also essential. When you look at, um, there's Maslow's hi hierarchy of needs, right? So we can't become a self-actualized person unless we're taking care of our basic air, water, food, shelter, sleep. If that baseline, if those baseline needs are not met, it's very hard for us to, you know, be to advocate to do all these higher level things if we're not taking care of our basic needs. And in our society, sometimes people think I can sort of neg negate this one. I don't have to worry too much about sleep. I don't need much sleep but you're decreasing your productivity and damaging your health by not having enough sleep. Let me take any questions or um, anybody wanna say anything at this point. I wanna make this a conversation, not a lecture. Yes, Lois, you had a question in the uh, chat. In the chat, okay, uh, thank you. From Miss Naomi, she asked, how many hours mm. does an adult require? Great question. And All right. then how much for a 10 year old and then how much for a two to five year old? Okay, I'm gonna skip forward to a slide I have here for you. Let me just go, I'm gonna, cause you have that question I wanna. So how much sleep is enough, right? If we're looking at newborns, right? I know one thing we love about a baby when they bring them home, they can sleep up to 17 hours a day because that's what they need. They're growing, they're just, you know, becoming accustomed to the environment. So she said for a two-year-old, Two to five year old. Two to five, right? So 10 yeah. to 13 hours of sleep. I used to remember when I would, when my kids were um, younger and like now it's getting lighter 
And I would try to make a habit of always getting them in bed by um, seven o'clock, let's say six, seven o'clock. But in the summertime, it's like, oh, it's still light outside. It's like, no, but you still need your sleep. So they need a lot more sleep. And especially if they're um, in households where you have to get up early because you've got to bring them to, you know, well, now we're not doing that, but bringing them, you know, getting them up and out for school. It's really important that we guard and we give them the right amount of sleep. And then she said, um, a teenager still needs eight to 10 hours of sleep. And then as adults, we should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep. And I mean, we should get this and protect this like it's important. No one can come up to you and say, you know, don't breathe as much as you, um, you need to breathe today. But we can, and we do have sometimes people who are like, oh, you're gonna, um, I'm gonna have you, you know, stay up or, you know, people um, stay up in their, on their social media and they don't realize that all of that time in front of um, light tells our body that it's still daytime and it doesn't allow you. If you only give yourself four hours of sleep, you're not allowing yourself to go through all of the cycles that are, that are required so that we can have optimal regeneration, healing, creativity, um, you know, detoxification, all of the things that we need. And they found with people who are recovering, if they just keep pushing themselves, pushing themselves, it's not as impactful. Like I said, the amount of nutrition and the amount of um, exercise is not as important as, as good quality sleep. So thank you for that question. Um, one thing, Dr. Green, I wanted to share sure. was um, my 10 year old, um, I'll say when he started kindergarten, um, mm -hmm. I noticed he started to get um, migraines. Mm. And um, when I took him to the pediatrician, he recommended I take him to a, is it a neurologist? Neurologist. Uh -huh. Okay. So he went to the pediatric neurologist. And then like, I found out through his dad that he would, when he was younger, like around that age, he was suffering from migraines. Oh, wow. And so um, anyway, he's still, he's 10 now. So it started when he was like around age five and then mm -hmm. 10, but I found that it was uh, a lot of it was due to him not getting enough sleep right. and hydration. So now like I hmm. kind of have it under control. So I was asking about how, about how many hours I still need help. Cause I have two younger boys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I still, with this whole pandemic, I still been thrown off with the amount of hours yeah. of sleep, yeah. but I noticed that um, when he gets the right amount of sleep and his hydration, he doesn't have the migraines okay. um, as often. Um, but if he doesn't get his sleep and stay hydrated, he'll get the migraines. And so, um, the sleep is, is very, very important. As a matter of fact, he's still sleeping right now. Yeah. Um, and that's he, good. It's he not should bad. be up, but he went to bed. They, we went to bed a little bit late last night it was Friday night, but, um, yeah, sleep is very important. I didn't realize that then now I'm still learning that they need to get more sleep. Correct. And not just them, right? Us. Me too. Right. Exactly. And so it's important that we set up routines so that it helps them um, get into the, um, get into a cycle of being able to wind down and go to sleep. We, we like I said, our, a lot of our technology is really harming us in the way that um, we don't realize that the blue light from the cell phones and the computers are all impacting our body's um, ability to go into that proper cycle of sleep. And so they, here's another study, right? They've, they've studied children and they're finding that 58% of children are not getting enough sleep. And, and it, it reflects itself in concentration problems, you know, impulse control problems, um, risk of anxiety. And I'm going to tell you that our kids, I, I don't know how much because they're not all together that we actually get to talk to kids, but they are internalizing this pandemic in a way that we probably don't realize. And there's a lot of um, anxiety that's now being um, recognized and hopefully people are accessing, you know, accessing services, but a lot of it is due to not getting enough rest. They, you know, when our kids are in school and they've, they've noticed that there's aggression issues, these can be related to a lack of sleep. You know, we talked about depression and some people think, oh, you know, they're depressed and they sleep a lot. But if you're not getting the right kind of sleep, you know, you're sleeping in, in rooms that have light, um, light always shining on you, your body never gets the message that I need to go into my sleep cycle. That's why darkness is really important in our kids' rooms. You shouldn't let them, you know, sleep with the t television on, with their cell phones on. Even that little tiny bit of blue light 
gives the body the message that it's still daytime. So um, we'll talk about how important routines are to get the um, a comfortable amount of sleep, get the right amount of sleep. Um, this just talks about you know some other effects of poor sleep. We talked about the impact of um, uh, heart disease and accidental deaths. I can't tell you how many times people you know drive sleeping, and we'll, I'll show another um, another slide. Probably in 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 uh, school, it, it it affects itself or it manifests itself in frequent yawning, and that's just your body. When you're yawning, your body's trying to get enough oxygen and sort of a demonstration that yeah, I'm not getting enough sleep. We talked about memory problems. They've actually tied a lack of sleep to hallucinations, right? I told you in our, our hospital, when, when uh, patients come in with mental health problems, you can't even do a good assessment until they have rested. So it can take sometimes hours before we can really get a good handle on and have the psychiatrist get a, uh, an assessment of what's happening with the person's brain if they don't have enough sleep. You have this micro sleep and some people are just um, what they call narcoleptic where they just fall asleep in the middle of the day. It's not effective sleep and it's just a symptom that you're not getting that your sleep is poor um, we talked about the immune system the impact of weight gain has been so well studied and people don't realize it they're like oh you know i've been dieting i've been dieting and i i just can't lose weight you may not be getting enough sleep you know in order for your body to go through the the cycles of healing right to be able to use the um the hormones and i think um one of the hormones that has to do with how we hold on to weight is cortisol. And if we aren't sleeping well, that body is just going to hold on to the fat because the, the high levels of cortisol are almost telling your body that you know, cortisol happens when you're going to, um, it's like that fight or flight. So if you're, a, if a lion comes into the room where you are, your body is going to get this heightened um, level so that you're able to either get through that window or fight, you know, fight to the death that lion. So when you're having those hormones continuously in your body, your body doesn't know whether there's a lion there or not. It just knows I need to hold on to this body fat because I'm going to need it in order to survive. Um, we talked about the, uh, and so that cortisol can also impact your blood pressure, right? So your people who are having blood pressure problems may not be getting enough sleep. Um, brain activity, we talked about how just cognitively, you don't want, I don't want my surgeon um, you know, coming off of an all-nighter and then coming in to, you know, do my, do my surgery. Please get enough sleep. Talked about moodiness. That's for adults as well. You know, I, I told my husband, he's a lot more annoying when I'm tired than when I'm not. Just imagine, but it's all him. It's not anything to do with me, but it is. Um, you're definitely more accident prone. A lot more poor choices happen when you're, um, when you don't have enough sleep. Um, believe it or not, they've, they've shown that people who get less sleep have a higher number of colds and flus. Um, and then type two diabetes is, is tied to poor sleep. All right. When they've looked at traffic accidents, you know, they say, everybody's like, oh, don't drive drunk, don't drive drunk. Don't drive sleepy. Over 100,000 car crashes, 40,000 injuries every year due to poor sleep. People who are driving sleepy, all right? Impaired and fatigued or fatigued. And they just um, didn't, you know, what's worse, <laughs> driving sleepy or driving drunk? It's almost the same. You know, I, I um, used to love to do these long, long trips and would come off of work and then want to go and, you know, drive to South Carolina. Bad idea. Get your rest. Make sure you have enough sleep because it is as bad. It mimics having a high blood alcohol concentration. Do I take a break here? What prevents people from getting sleep? Unmute. Say that again. Asking that question? Or yes, I'm oh. asking the question. Oh, okay. I'll wait for a parent, then I'll jump in. Okay. I would say, I would say stress. Can stress cause it? Sure. Stress. If your mind is going racing, 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 and you're not getting enough, um, not able to get into a full cycle of sleep, that can, can do it. What else? Environment, uh, depending on your environment, it yes, could be, it could be a lot of kids. It could be, you know, you can be in an unhealthy environment. Sure, you could have noise. We talked about light. You know, our bodies are complex organisms, and the darkness gives our body a signal that we should be going into sleep. 
So if you're a person that lives, you know, close to a, um, a street lamp and you constantly have a light coming into your bedroom, that could keep you from getting sleep. If you're a person that loves to be on the cell phone, you don't want to miss an Instagram post or, you know, you, you just want to, you're Johnny on the spot with the text, that little light from the cell phone can be keeping you from getting enough sleep. The, um, the buzzes that you get when, um, I, I, sometimes I'm with people and their phone is, um, they have notifications on. And so you get this like this buzz. So that like that buzz they've tied and, and done studies, it's tied to getting a dopamine rush, right? So it's like, you're giving yourself like a little jolt every time you hear that buzz, then your mind goes into an overdrive. I wonder who it is, do I need to respond, blah, 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 you know? And so you don't get to properly rest when you're um, exposed to those kind of uh, uh, things. What else? Definitely also yes. just waiting for a program or a documentary to come yep. on uh, the television and yeah. it may start at 10 o'clock at night. Yes. So your, your body gets accustomed to whatever your cycle is. And if you go into your bedroom and you're used to, I'm going to watch an hour or two of TV, then it's psyched for that. You're not going to be able to sleep for an hour or two because your body is kind of waiting for that, um, you know, for that to happen, for that routine. And that's why um, changing your sleep and empowering yourself to get better sleep requires that we change our routines, that we prepare ourselves for sleep in a way that you darken the room, you turn off the, the buzzes, you, you um, sometimes people have a, a bedtime routine. I know with kids, it really works if, you know, we give them a bath so that then, you know, that kind of chills them out, um, glass of water, whatever the routine is, but you have some ritual that you um, perform that kind of gives your body the signal we're getting ready to go to sleep. I heard this hack um, the other day that people that were having problems sleeping and they, they just imagine a, um, a chalkboard and they, in their minds, while they're trying to go to sleep, go, up, go in and write the, le the alphabet, the first letter of the alphabet in your mind, you're just doing it in your mind, you write the first letter and then you imagine yourself erasing the first letter. And you just keep doing that on the, chalk on the chalkboard in your mind I'm usually out by D. <laughs> I don't have a problem sleeping, but it is something that they don't know why it works, but it seems to really just the, um, the ritual of drawing on the board and then erasing it and make sure you erase, you know, every um, piece of the letter, but lot, lots of causes. Anybody else? Yes, Dr. Yeah. Shirley. What prevents people from getting sleep can be what you eat and or drink yes. prior to going to bed. Sometimes Absolutely on things, you might get heartburn, GERD, or indigestion. Yep. Drinking too much before you're going to bed means that you're frequently going to the restroom and then that Correct. can break your sleep cycle. Correct. So when we eat food, our body has to go into work mode because we're breaking down all of that food, putting the nutrients where they have to go, getting the hydration. It's a lot of work. So if you have a super heavy meal right before you go to bed, it can prevent you from going into that, um, that perfect uh, sleep cycle so that you can have all the rejuvenation and the benefits of sleep. Um, absolutely. Good one. I have some more here. So uh, just, to, just to help us along. Somebody mentioned stress and that was absolutely um alcohol smoking caffeine you know caffeine comes in many many forms um orange soda has caffeine you know mountain dew coca-cola mm -hmm. pepsi right if you're drinking these types of beverages late at night it takes over an hour or two to even be able to process that um those things and the, and the amount of caffeine. And I know when I was studying, I could drink a cup of coffee and it would help me stay up all night. So um, alcohol, caffeinated beverages, all of those things can take away from our sleep. So we really need to, when we recognize how valuable sleep is, guard our bodies and give our bodies the, the tools that we need for them to, for it to function optimally. Um, we talked about environmental factors and we talked about um, just, you know, if your bed's not comfortable, you should just make sure that, you know, you prepare your, your bedroom for sleep. Lowe's? Yes. Um, act, people shouldn't exercise either. Like at, at least two hours before they go into bed, they should not um, exercise because correct. that will keep you from going to sleep opposed to people thinking that's going to relax them to be able to go to sleep. Correct. There's um, there's studies done as to exactly when it's when it's 
important to do exercise. And I think most of the studies say that it's really good to do it in the morning. And you have to look at your sleep cycle because you have some people who work nights and it doesn't matter when you sleep, it just matters that you sleep and that you give your allow your body to go through the, the cycles. So you're absolutely correct. If you're exercising right before bed, it can make you more alert and more um, uh, less likely to get a good sleep and to get into that good sleep. Because if you're only giving yourself four hours of sleep, you don't, you're not even able to get into um, the deep sleep where all the healing and, and, and things happen because you're, you now have to, you know, wake up and, and you don't get the optimal be benefit. So yes, absolutely. Choosing the time. And even if you're going to do five minutes of exercise in the morning, it is more beneficial than not doing anything. So five minutes, they've done, you know, lots of research, whether you, you know, get on the mat for, um, for yoga or do uh, five minutes of this, um, there's something called, um, I can't remember it now, uh, but it's like a, you know, you 10 seconds of this and that, but literally five minutes gives you so much more benefit and you do need exercise. You do need some sort of physical activity in order to get healthy sleep. Um, and we talked about some of the problems with unhealthy sleep. You know, when you don't sleep well, when you wake up the next morning, it's all about um, your body's craving all of these things. And a lot of it has to do with the hormones that you're missing, right? Because you're not sleeping well. So if you're, you know, your cortisol levels are too high, you're, you're, you're craving um, sweets and um, crunchy things and just things that are um, trying to replace what you could have uh, made up by getting good sleep, get good sleep. A lot of people, and I'm gonna tell you, do not get in the, in the way of Americans in line to get that caffeine from you know one of the one of the uh, coffee stores in the morning because you'll get hurt, right? Do not. There was a um, TikTok, and it was like, oh, you know, you have coffee every morning. Do you are you gonna die if you don't have the coffee? And it's like, no, but you might. Like we are very serious about our morning coffee. So a lot of time that's because we don't get enough sleep, right? Um, we talked about needing to reduce screen time for kids and we don't, they don't realize and we don't realize that little bit of light. And, and um, if you have an Apple product, they actually have an app, it's free where you can have the right, um, you know, have that light, the bad light uh, go off at night so that you're not, um, constantly in this state of, I need to be awake, I need to be awake. And then they have it for Android as well. Um, just Google it, but it's it's important that you, you know, power off the devices and not use it as your, um, as your alarm clock because even that little bit of light can keep you from getting, um, getting good sleep. And then we talked about how important physical activity is. You know, you can't have kids just sit, 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 sit all day. They need some physical activity and it helps to um, make their sleep better. You have a question, Lois? Yes, it was, please. Yeah, just getting ready to say that. Sure. No, there was a question in the chat. I mean, a message in the chat that said health conditions, you know, like ah. if you were in pain or something. So somebody put that in the chat just to say what else can be a problem that prevents yeah. one from sleeping. <laughs> Someone says, I guess I have to stop my pina colada. Yeah, it's probably better to have something that's um, not a sugary sweet drink, especially right before, because people think, oh, I'll have alcohol, it'll knock me out. But if it doesn't get you through the cycles of sleep, and don't forget that when you're drinking alcohol, alcohol has to be detoxified by our liver. That's work, right? So if your body's working on, you know, um, breaking down a poison, you're not going to get to that healthy, um, those healthy cycles of sleep. So it's not the best, best things like, oh yeah, but I'm knocked out, but you can be knocked out for nine hours and not get, um, not feel rested, not, not get to that um, optimal level of, um, of healthy sleep, right? So go ahead. Somebody wants to say something. I thought I heard somebody saying something. Hope I didn't kill everybody's joy here, no. <laughs> but sleep, I'm telling you, if we get good sleep and um, it, it, it adds so much to our lives, our health, our, um, our well-being, our ability to interact with people in a positive way, because we're not, we're not grouchy, we're not, you know, we're, um, we're optimizing our physical being and our mental being. And this and Dr. Green, one thing in concluding your, this uh, particular slide. Sure. Um, odors. Yes, odors. odors. Um, 
So if you're frying a lot of food in your home or even baking a lot of food, it doesn't matter. Believe mm -hmm. it or not, I, I'm understanding, and please correct me if I'm in, um, just simply 365 days of the year, have some fresh air. Yes. Especially in your sleeping environment. Absolutely. And, th and that just helps with, like I said, respiration and being able to be in an environment where you can be comfortable and relaxed because you don't want to... Um, you know, have anxiety about the, the space where you're sleeping. So yeah, making your sleep, making your um, your bedroom a place and are there kids in the room? I don't know, can't tell. Anyway, for sleep and sex, that's what it should be for, right? So that your, um, it's, it has a specific purpose. You're not in there to do your, um, you know, do your reports, to do work to look at you know the latest television that you really set up a place where your body can rejuvenate so that you can be the best human being that you can be because it's important it's as important as breathing as important as drinking you know water and hydrating and like i said started with the with the first slide if we recognize the contribution that we can be to the world then it's our responsibility to be as um to be a, a, a steward over that over ourselves so that we can optimize our optimize our health. And this is just a slide that shows how um, people with uh, the relationship between obesity and anybody, I'm not sure if you're doing a whole piece on that, but when you look at the obesity rates in the United States over the last 50 years, it has absolutely escalated. And when you look at how much time we're sleeping, it has absolutely plummeted. So there's a relationship and we need to um, reverse that, especially in our children. We are um, going in the wrong direction. And I don't think the pandemic has helped because a lot of people have been um, comfort eating, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm, I, I'm gonna look at the latest charts, but I don't think it's gotten any better as a country that we're, um, we have to reverse it by being intentional. And this was um, to go back to the, the question um, how many hours of sleep. And even as adults, you know, it was so funny because last night I was up late putting this together. I'm like, Lois, you're talking about sleep and you're not getting enough sleep, but I'm going to take a nap today. But I, it's really important. Seven to eight hours of sleep as a, as an adult that we, you know, do our best to get, to get it. Um, habit tips, just how, you know, and we've talked a lot about these, right? So, Make it a priority. You know, no one can tell you that you to stop breathing. No one should tell you that you, you know, can't get enough sleep. You should set up your time, protect your time, make sure that you have a routine that really just helps. You know, our bodies are um, are so adaptable. But when we set up a daily routine, it's like after a while, you, you know, you come home from work, you do this, you relax, you you um you know take your shower, and then you put a put yourself in a cycle where you're preparing for that um, that magic that happens during sleep. Um, be active during the day. You know, if you're sleeping all day, you're not going to sleep all night. So it's really important that we be active. We talked about screen time. I can't stress how um, critical that is. Um, don't overload our schedule. You know, this pandemic has shut us, our schedules down, but now I see it's like creeping back up. So um, just guard your schedule. Make sure that you give yourself sufficient time, time to rest. Recognize when you're having sleep problems, right? There's something um, going awry if you're not able to, to get into that REM sleep. Um, this is just about making sure that parents and, and teachers communicate about how a child is alert. Because sometimes kids, I mean, I, I know my mom would put us to bed and then I'd be under the um, covers with a flashlight reading until all hours of the night because, you know, I could. So just looking and making sure that um, our children are getting sufficient sleep and then having those conversations with healthcare providers um, about what you can do. Sometimes it's increasing exercise. It's changing, um, changing the diet. We talked about the types of food that can um, keep you up, keep you awake. Um, making a routine every morning to get up at the same time that helps improve our sleep. Um, somebody mentioned sunlight and how important it is. You know, sun is food. It is. It is. And I don't think people realize it. Vitamin D deficiency is um, being studied in this pandemic. It started in bats because they have very, very low. Um, vitamin D levels and it thrives, the, the virus thrives in um, organisms that are low in vitamin D. So getting enough sunlight in the morning is critical to getting good rest. Um, relaxing activities before bed, you know, 
you can use our bedroom. I, I mentioned this, right? For just the two things, not, uh, you know, 50 million things and then avoiding um, those things that harm our sleep right before bed. Why do we wanna do this? Definitely to decrease our stress. You know, stress is a normal part of our lives, but managing it, our body's equipped to do it if we give it what it needs. Um, and it affects our physical and our mental health, definitely. And we talked about just, all right, now we're gonna take a little quiz. All right, so everybody get ready. I'm gonna put up a picture and I want you to tell me, um, are we ready, Mike? We're ready. Okay, great. I want you to tell me, um, there's some items here and I want you to tell me what is the most dangerous to our health, right? So can everyone see the poll? I want you yes. to make a selection and I'll give you 20 seconds. How will I know when everyone's done? I'll give you a couple seconds. The most dangerous. Mm-hmm, pick one. So all of the above, huh? <laughs> nope, you gotta pick one. Are we just to announce our selection or is it? No, there you're gonna, oh, you should no see the poll on your screen and you're just gonna click one. Oh, just click it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and then when you click, click submit. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. That's so we have alcohol. It's not working on my screen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not working? No. All right. How many people say alcohol? Just put your hand up in the, in the um, mm -hmm. screen. One. Let's see. It, 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 the votes are coming through. I've got 11. Oh, they are. Time. Okay. Oh, so you maybe, did? Yep. Maybe. Try clicking on it again. Okay. All right. So we have alcohol, we have cigarettes, we have, um, uh, what is this, fast food, and then um, sugary sweets. Are we good? Anybody still voting? Nope. Okay. All right. So we have, let's see, wow, 27% said alcohol. Some said cigarettes. Nobody said the fast food, sugary sweets. Okay. So let's reveal the answer. Drum roll, please. It's, oops, sorry. It's the chair. Physical inactivity in our society is proving to be very extremely dangerous to our health. So we have kids or people that are, you know, you, you get up and you go and you sit at a desk, you um, come home from work, you sit on the couch. When we're on vacation, we go and sit on a, on a lawn chair, and, you know, sit by the beach. And, and there's, the studies are showing that this level of physical activity, even if you're doing an hour of exercise a day, if you're having six and seven hours of this um, physical inactivity, it is, dangerous to your health. So we need to um, stand more. We need to um, exercise more and not, you know, anything crazy, but just to be very cognizant of how important it is that we as organisms need to move. It impacts our health. Anybody surprised by that? Okay. All right. Why should I exercise? What does it give me? What's the benefit? It increases our stamina. Anybody ever notice that if, especially now, if you've been indoors and haven't been, you know, walking up and down stairs, when you go to take a, a set of stairs and you haven't done it in a while, you feel winded. It um, makes you feel fit and healthy just to have um, exercise. There's something about what's going on with the circulation, and there's just these other benefits when we when we exercise. It sharpens our thinking. Um, it helps us to sleep. Believe it or not, if we don't exercise, we sleep worse than if we, if we do. Um, and of course, all the benefits of just your body is leaner. It gives you more energy. Your muscles actually are stronger. They've looked at um, people who are vitamin D deficient and these, um, a lot of times it's um, uh, females, Caucasian females, and when they have low vitamin D, they have brittle bones. And they've even had um, athletes that have had you know, these injuries, and when they look at what, what's the problem, their vitamin D or their um, uh, vitamin D and their, their bones are not well-structured. So they actually have them where they um, do exercise on a, on a rebounder, like a trampoline, but a little one. So you're actually um, 
getting more energy and more um, strength to your bones by exercising. So it makes our bones stronger. It helps us to relax, believe it or not, and help. It can be very, very, very helpful in managing stress. Um, I'm, a, I'm a nurse, and so I worked through this whole entire pandemic, and every weekend I would go out to um, Liberty and just ride my, my bike, and it really helped manage the stress of what we were seeing um, in, in the hospitals this past year. So um, just a little pitch for exercise. And then just- um, can, I, can, I, can I jump in really quickly? Please, of course, this just, is a conversation. So just for those who are looking for an opportunity to exercise more, we're doing a virtual 5K this chapter. So I'm gonna post this in the cool. chat. Here's an opportunity to do that. Excellent, excellent. I've got to sign up. When is it? Starts on May 15th and runs through May 23rd. You can get your walk or your run in anytime during that time. Uh, okay, excellent. So see, here we go. All right. And then just helping our kids, right? So mental wellness, and um, we talked a lot about sleep. It's all about having coping mechanisms. It's not that the stress is not gonna, gonna come. It's not that kids are not going to feel, um, feel frustrated. It's about helping them develop coping mechanisms to be able to deal, to deal with life. And same thing for ourselves, right? I, I find when I have a lot going on, if I just go and I make my bed every morning, I, it's like a, a ritual. It helps me sort of just, it's almost like a meditation, right? It's something that I'm familiar with that I, and at the end of it, it gives me a benefit of, it's the biggest piece of furniture in the room. It now looks nice. And then I can sort of face, face the day. It's a little thing, but it, you need to find your thing that helps you manage your stress. It can be music, right? It can be going for a walk. It can be taking deep breaths. You know, one of the things we recognize is that we don't breathe enough. We don't take deep breaths. So just taking that time and saying, you know, before I react to something, I'm going to take three breaths. Um, you know, we live in a quick world, so we can just uh, blast off an email. Before you send that email, take three deep breaths. And sometimes when you come back around, you're like, it's just not that deep, delete, and you can keep moving in life. So find your, your thing. Teach our kids um, coping mechanisms. Teach them the skills of being able to manage themselves. And then also just teach them to value how important taking care of themselves is, right? You know, on the plane, every ride, they tell you, you know, before you can put on somebody else's oxygen mask, mask you've got to put on your own and to, to do that so that you can be the best person for, for the next person. So any of these um, coping skills, um, at least for a minute, and just um, gives us some perspective. And that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. I thank you guys for listening. Happy to take questions. At what point would you feel it would be recommended to power down all of your technology types of products mm -hmm. before bed? At least an hour before bed, especially before you're going, because you wanna, um, I, I, like I said, a lot of those um, devices give us shots of dopamine and it takes a while for those things to um, settle down in our system before we can really um, get into a good cycle of sleep and sleep has multiple cycles. This I hope whets your appetite. I could talk all day about um, the benefits and the impact of sleep. There's books out there about sleeping smarter. Please do more, um, read more, Google. Um, Cause there's, there's a lot out, out there about how we can heal ourselves faster by being able to have um, effective uh, sleep. Do you find that your stress level has gone down since the vaccine has come along in terms of, you mentioned that you go to uh, Liberty Park to ride your bike. Are you continuing to ride your bike or is the hospital as busy as it was last year this time? So, great question. So the hospital is consistent. It's not, a, it's definitely nothing like March, April, May of last year. Um, that was a devastation that in my career as a, as a health professional, I've never seen and will, I never want to see again. So, the question was, has my anxiety gone down because of the vaccine? So I was, I guess my, my anxiety sort of um, has been managed through, throughout. I'm happy that, um, that there's more conversation and I'm happy that people are um, embracing health 
in a way that they are now. So that it, there's, there's the vaccine conversation, but I guess I get cautious that we have the vaccine conversation so that I can go back and do what I was doing before. I think what's starting now, and I'm very excited about that is that people recognize that I've gotta be healthy because if I'm not healthy, this virus hasn't gone anywhere and it's still infecting people. So I wanna be as resistant to that. I think the conversation now is about how do I adapt recognizing that this, this virus is in our community. Um, HIV entered our community more than 25 years ago. It hasn't gone anywhere. We as um, human beings have adapted and we are, you know, they've, they've created a lot of um, different uh, behavior education and uh, medications. And so now it's really a chronic illness. You know, when you talk about COVID-19, it's the same virus as the cold virus, right? So you can catch it multiple times. So it's not like, oh, I've got it and now I'm immune or I'm vaccinated and now I can't get it. That's not the conversation. The vaccine that we're currently uh, looking at is looking at managing the amount of mortality and the devastation that we had in March. And I'm gonna tell you that it was all, it was a, a very high number of high risk people that had heart disease, diabetes, obesity, that were having the worst effects. It's not gone anyway, but anywhere, those people are still at risk. So managing and um, getting the vaccine and then managing health behavior so that we can be healthier because this, this virus just keeps um, mutating is how we're going to adapt and thrive with this um, virus in our community. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Personally, I found that um, during the, the past year, and Lisa and I, we've worked also in the hospital setting and it was very stressful. And I would, you know, you, you get into a routine. So you would come home, I strip, you know, scrubs yeah. in a plastic bag, shower, yeah. dinner, that, that whole cycle, it yes. was amazing. Yes. Um, but then I would turn on MSNBC and, mm -hmm. yeah. and and then I was up all night mad. Yeah. So I, because, you know, I watched it until 10, 11 o'clock at night. So then I have changed my behavior. And yeah. I, you know, I get a little bit of MSNBC and CNN just to stay in tune, NPR. Yeah. But then I watch Hallmark before I go to bed. Just okay. something happy, something, yeah, you know, something, something light. So I open up the windows in my room and. <laughs> so this is what, what you're speaking of is finding a way to manage your, manage the stress. Cause for anybody that's on, I'm going to tell you that every, whether it be physicians or nurses, anybody that was um, working through this pandemic went through trauma because it was, it was devastating. Being able to manage, and they and they looked at um, trauma victims, right? And so we don't think of ourselves as, as victims because we're just doing it and we have to take care of people and we're just kind of going. But in order to manage trauma, you've got to um, focus on something real. You've got to focus on um, not the future or the past, you've got to become present. And so, being present, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, has prob is probably one of the best adap adaptations that we can make as, um, as human beings, because when you talk about anxiety, you're worrying about what might happen. When you're talking about depression, you're worried about what, you know, what has happened or, um, yeah, so you're, so being present and recognizing that you're alive right now, that you're, you know, breathing right now, that you have the the, um, the information and the wisdom and the knowledge not to transmit the virus and going through the rituals of hand washing, you know, making sure that we're, um, we're using our personal protective equipment. And I'm gonna tell you that I have um, scores of ICU nurses that worked with COVID-19 patients every single day and did not come down with COVID-19 because the personal protective equipment works. If you wear it poorly, it's not going to work. I see people, I watched the, um, uh, the hearings and I watched the Senator pull down his mask, cough into his hand and then pull the mask back up. That shows a basic lack of knowledge of what the purpose of the mask is. The purpose of the mask is source control, really more protecting other people from your potential um, exposure. And if 
for some reason, um, you know, someone did cough it out on the outside of your mask. So we should not be handling our mask like it's um, our shirt, right? It should be treated like it's potentially contaminated. And this is a whole nother lecture. I won't take time on this. I know I want to be on time, but um, yeah, going through the rituals, making sure that we, we self care, that we get enough rest is, is um, critical to being able to manage constant, constant trauma. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of great work that's been done on how we're going to get through this and making sure you recognize when you're just done, you know, just done. Okay, I just have a quick question for mm -hmm. the families that are on the line. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to share or ask any questions dealing with coping and your mental health during this time for yourselves and for your children, if there's any way that, you know, we can provide some assistance or, mm -hmm. but, you know, just to share some information. I have, um a question um, as health professionals. Mm -hmm. So you guys do believe that the vaccine is safe and um, cause that's my number one concern. I wanna get vaccinated, mm -hmm. but um, like with everything that was going on, like with our, um, with our yeah. government yeah. and um, you know, um, false information, I, mm -hmm. I, I got trust issues now. Sure, sure. I had things that have happened in our community within the black community um, mm -hmm. in the past that I have trust issues. So I wanna hear from somebody that looks like me. Sure, so I can speak to that if um, I'm both. Yeah. So one of the things I think that we as Americans are very isolated in our information about um, research and science and things like that. So um, the COVID-19 virus is uh, one of seven um, Corona viruses, right? So in 2003, China had to deal with SARS. Um, and then after that, that which SARS is a, um, a respiratory illness with where, you know, I don't know if you ever see Chinese people in um, subways and stuff, they wear their masks because they've already dealt with a deadly um, respiratory illness. Um, after that came MERS. So there are scientists that have been working on RNA based vaccines since 2003. It wasn't our issue because it wasn't our problem. You know, it was a, 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 um, a Chinese problem. And so we didn't know that the research was going on. We certainly didn't, um, didn't care that the research was going on, but it was going on. The people, the researchers that have been working on RNA vaccines presented at conferences back in 2018 about the baseline research that, that's being done. Because if this happens, you know, there's, this is not our first pandemic. This is not um, there was a whole plan around, you know, how this should be managed. And it was just um, a, a super failure in, in leadership and how, how it happened. But the research has been going on for years. So now, you know, the other thing that we have to recognize, we live in a country where everything is about the money, right? So pharmaceutical companies were not focused on bringing vaccines to market because first of all, there was no big dollar drop. Now when everything shut down, the stadiums are shut down, the you know the theaters are shut down, it became a fast forward, go and get that researcher from Germany, from um, you know wherever they are and all the ones that were working here on it, get all the minds together. And they shared information like that. Back in March, the Chinese doctors who had all of the, you know, the sequencing and how it worked released all that information. Some of them lost their lives because they did that. But it it gave the research is an opportunity to be able to put in, um, in motion, sort of fast track, the, um, the work that normally would have taken super amounts of years. It's also a global pandemic. So the amount of people I, I think that were in the um, initial Pfizer study were more than 40,000 people. And they normally can't test on that many people at once, but because it was in, impacting so many countries, they had the opportunity. Now we're up to over over 10 million people, maybe over 100 million people. I think I think I heard um, somebody from uh, the news yesterday said we've already, we've already exceeded 100 million people that have been vaccinated. And I'm gonna tell you, I work at a vaccination site and I'm gonna tell you the people that were in line and, and elbowing people to get out of the way to get that vaccine did not look like us. And so um, the conspiracy, um, just as a little sad because we're almost like Tuskegeeing ourselves. Like, you know, we can't right. 
negate a, um, a, and it's not a cure. And I don't want people to think that, oh, if I get this vaccine, I'll never get COVID. That's not the case, right? It's about the morbidity and the mortality. People that got the vaccine did not die from it. And I can tell you that's happening now in our hospital. So whereas we'll, we're still having people, I, I probably have 50 people, 40 people, 30 people, 20 people a day that are sick enough to be hospitalized, but I'm discharging. You know, the people are coming in and I'm discharging more than 95% of the people who have COVID, which is to tell you that COVID's still in our community, but they're not getting as sick as, as they were. And I think a lot of that's going to be to both hygiene and the vaccine. So, so Dr. Green, I, I know we're cognizant of time. So, um, even healthcare professionals, and I think you may also agree as well as Lisa, mm -hmm. those of us who are on the front line mm -hmm. um, still have not been vaccinated. And part of it, we were, oh yeah, gun ho, yeah, we'll follow the science, but there are influencers that mm -hmm. people are listening to mm -hmm. that, wait a minute, I, I don't know about this. You remember the Tuskegee, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. That's where we start to move forward and then we're backing off again. Yeah. So and I think deal with the influencers and the evidence base and follow the science. See, I am a I'm a believer, right? This is a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So I don't make it my platform to convince people to take the vaccine. That's not my um, that's not my role. I, I think that I, people have to have good information. You've got to recognize that if you're not taking the vaccine, then you still have to protect yourself because the virus hasn't gone anywhere and it's still mutating. So people who don't take the vaccine and don't wear a mask and don't, you know, hand hygiene and, you know, continue to have all these large gatherings, they just shut down Mar-a-Lago, you know, so those are people who are supposedly um, smart, but here because of their beliefs, now they had to shut down the entire, the dining room, like they, they can't. They now are going into the same, you know, a lockdown right. essentially, which if right. you're um, acting responsibly, people are, um, I, I went to a gym in, in uh, South Carolina, everybody was wearing a mask, everybody was, um, you know, um, sanitizing the, um, the space before and after they used it. I mean, we're taking care of each other in this environment where there's a deadly virus, right? So to not take it has to be a, a personal decision because if you think you're going to die from COVID, you may die from COVID because Absolutely. that's your belief. But if you think that, you know what, I'm in this world and there are hundreds, and I can tell you thousands of people who have been intensely exposed, worn the, protect, the, the protective equipment, not gotten it, not gotten it, are moving on in, in life, then you got to take that information and make decisions for how am I going to manage my health? You know, I have an eight, my mom is um, in her 80s and, you know, I've got teenagers and I um, recognize that I'm going to be in health spaces and I'm going to be taking care of people who are vulnerable. And so, yeah, I think it's why I said I, I have the vaccine. I took my vaccine. So, but it's not a, it's not the be all and the end all. And I don't take it and then say, okay, now I'm just going to live footloose and fancy free because I still have to recognize that these mutant mutations God knows we are learning, we're flying this plane, I'm building this plane while we fly it. So, you know, when, when we learn about a new mutation, then we have to act accordingly. But the, 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 the ways to stay safe haven't changed. You know, it's um, wear, wear the mask, making sure that you have social distancing, making sure that we're washing our hands, that we're sanitizing our areas, that we're um, caring for each other in, in, a, in a way. Because like I said, I want to travel. I want to, you know, there's a lot of things that life is, going to um, keep going on. The virus is going to keep going on, but we, we shouldn't have the idea that it's just going to poof, go away. Absolutely. A a any other questions of uh, Dr. Green from anyone? I just want to add one thing um, before we just wrap and close. With the um, influenza, if we've noticed as healthcare providers, it's declining. This is the flu season. And why is that? Because people are wearing their masks, they're washing their hands, their hand sanitizing. So then there's not as many people being admitted or going to their practitioner for health related things like a cold and a flu. Correct. So that mask, that protective equipment <laughs> is totally necessary to help prevent anything that might be spread Correct. through coughing and sneezing and not using your elbow. 
cut. Correct. So it's a good and a bad. So to take the vaccine, then, you know, that's always a pro or a con, as was mentioned, you know, but it is helpful to mm -hmm. then just armor yourself yep. in being out in the public. Absolutely. That's a very good point. Well, I would like to thank uh, Dr. I, I have one question, if I can, bro. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Green, uh, yes. excellent presentation. Um, you gave an interesting statistic. Um, you said at this point in time, um, almost about 95% of your patients who come down with COVID is recovering. Correct. Now, I find that very interesting because that 95%, probably a high percent, wasn't even vaccinated. So do you think um, a lot of these people who had acquired immunity, like so you now, said, with the common cold, they so probably now, had it and have acquired immunity. So and no, now, my, my, I, I don't think so. I think it's all about viral load, right? I lost over 12 staff members at the beginning of the, um, the pandemic. And uh, mm -hmm. some, the, 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 probably the most serious were, um, had somebody had traveled from China and they were lived like the parents were living with them, and both that both of those nurses expired. Both of them died because when you look at the amount of virus that they were potentially exposed to, I think it all has to do with viral load. So if okay. everyone is wearing masks, everyone is sanitizing, and you're getting just a very small dose, I think you're going to um, do a lot better. I think I think it Good has point. to do with the amount of exposure, okay. and you know that's just observation, you know, more okay. people, you know, like people get really panicked. Oh, somebody had COVID and I was in their space. Everybody in our hospital has to wear masks. So if you're, you know, going into spaces where even if you're, um, you're not, you're not wearing your mask properly, but everybody else is, and you're exposed, it's a much lower dose than, um, than mm -hmm. if you just, you know, went bare and everybody's, you know, hanging out, so. Mm -hmm. I have one more question pertaining yeah. to your presentation, sure. actually. Um, actually, as a researcher um, in the uh, biochemistry uh, group, uh, I did studies on Mercadian ribbons mm -hmm. and to how to reset them to bring you back in point with your rhythm. Now, we know that you hear a lot of people are sold on like melatonin that help them get back into their sleep patterns. Do you find any truth with that? So melatonin levels are important to the to getting it sleep. It's like it's like that um, the hormone that helps you get to sleep. But if you're taking melatonin, but you still have the light sources, you still are eating poorly. I think that we we're we're a drug um, juggle. Yeah, too much. We have to recognize that if we don't, if we give our bodies what it needs, we'll make our own melatonin and you'll go into the, into the cycle. So if we exercise, we re manage our screen time, we um, create an evening ritual, we'll be able to get into the cycle of sleep, but we'll be able to go through, go all, through all, all the cycles yeah. and sleep well. But people are like, oh, I want to sleep better. I'm going to drink alcohol. I'm going to eat, you know, eat late at night. I'm going to have my screens on and take melatonin and see if it works. It's, it's, it might put you down, but it doesn't help you go through the, um, the healing. Mm -hmm. That's my professional. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so we're gonna take this final question and then we have to wrap up because okay. we're beyond our time. Sorry. There's a question in the chat that's asking, is the va vaccine FDA approved? No. And does that make it, no, no, I'm just, okay. and does that make a difference or not? So it's not FDA approved, all right? It's in emergency use authorization. All of the vaccines were were um, were given that through the FDA. And does it make a difference? What it, to take or not to take. So, you know, one of the things I worked in, in oncology for a long time, right? And I find that 80% of the people who have children with cancer will end up in studies. When my child's life is on the line, I will take the medication that you don't know whether or not it's going to help them or not. We only have less than a 5% participation in studies by adults because we don't have that same, um, this is essentially a study, right? The, the initial 
findings from the study is that 95, you know, somewhere between 80 and 95% of the people who were vaccinated in groups did not um, have a significant, didn't have um, severe mortality and, and be very clear what, the, what they're sharing with us. It doesn't say they didn't get COVID. It says they did not have the severe mortality from COVID as people who were unvaccinated to the point where they had to stop the study and give those folks the vaccine because it wasn't right to say, oh yeah, y'all are dying. These people are 95% surviving and those aren't. And so we had to, we had to open it up. So they're still looking at it. And even as, you know, symptoms, I just heard about the, um, the AstraZeneca, um, what was it? Um, some kind of symptom that folks were having. Blood clots. Blood clots, right. So mm -hmm. when you look at a um, hundred million people, love you, my daughter's leaving, um, hundred million people that have had the vaccine and then you find blood clots in a hundred of them. When you look at the general population of people who have blood clots, it might be normally 500 of them, but because we're in this um, study period, they have to go back and look and say, was it the vaccine that caused the blood clots or the person's Absolutely. intrinsic, um, uh, you know, comorbidities that caused the blood clots? Same thing with the, um, the, the uh, Bell's palsy. When you look at the incidence of Bell, Bell's palsy in the population, it's not significant. It, it wasn't significant statistically significant enough to say that, oh, the vaccine caused, um, caused my Bell's palsy. Because we are in a society, we've got all these variables, right? People say, oh, you know, diabetes doesn't run in my family. Well, do people in your family run? Do you know what I'm saying? Like there's all kinds of factors that impact mm -hmm. our, our genetics. And so anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll That's have what to- you have to look at. Yes. 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 Many things, a lot of variables there. Right. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we uh, close out? Are we going to do incentives? Yes. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not finished yet. I'm just trying to okay. see what questions might. Okay, since there are no more questions, Dr. Green, let's give Dr. Green a great big round of applause. You did a great job. A lot of information, a lot of information that parents, as, parents as, as well as, as, well as a, a, us were on the line um, certainly can take hold of. And I'd like to thank the... Uh, Chai Chai uh, chapter of Chi Ada Phi Sorority for their participation. Um, Brother uh, Bosless uh, had to leave. He had another uh, engagement, but he certainly want to thank you all for another extraordinary session. Great job, and we look forward to the very next session. Uh, before we close out, we do have uh, incentives that we'd like to give away. Um, Brother Mike, I'll let you take over the incentive part. Okay. So as usual, we give uh, an incentive to the first person to join. Um, from what I saw, uh, Jaden and Regine Alexander were the first to join. All right. Um, so if you could, um, I, I know Jaden, Jaden is the, the child. I, I need the parents name. <laughs> so if you don't mind throwing that in the chat. Um, and so we're also going to give away one more um, just to the, the winner of the wheel. So well, let tell me. Tell us about the wheel. So the wheel is just going to randomly pick from among the participants um, who's going to get the, uh, the uh, incentive today, which I believe is a mystery bag of things to aid with sleep and stress relief, something like that. Um, so. Hopefully all of these names represent the, the uh, families who are on, on the uh, call and I'm gonna give it a spin. Okay. Okay, so I forgot to take Regine Alexander off. So we're gonna give it another spin. <laughs> I'm gonna remove her. Sorry about that. Myers. All right, Myers, congratulations. So I need I need your your name, like your, your full name, so I can find you on the participant list and, and I'll get you uh, the incentive. So please, if you can post that in the chat. For those that uh, are the winners today, you will receive uh, during the week, you'll uh, receive a letter uh, from the boss list along with your uh, incentive. Um, Again, the incentives go a long way to keeping our families engaged and 
We are also encouraging parents as well as uh, those that are on the line to invite others to participate. Our uh, catchment group is uh, ages uh, grades three through six. So if you know anyone in grades three through six, please invite them to participate. We have an ongoing recruitment, so uh, it'll be never ending. But uh, we do appreciate today's session. It was very enlightening, a lot of good information. And Dr. Green, we take, I'm gonna take my hat off to you. Extraordinary job. Uh, is there anything else before we close out from anyone? If not, we will close out. And um, thank you all and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you.